Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage here in New York City. I'm John Furrier, your host. Packed house here at the beginning of MongoDB Local, 26 city tour, starting here in New York City. You'll see it throughout the year. Going out to the streets with the developers are. Got great commentary, got two great guests here talking about the insurance area in the industry verticals. One of the hot announcements here during the event. Marcella Granados, global insurance leader, Databricks, and Jeff Needham, principal industry solutions at MongoDB. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. So industry verticals is the hot area. Everything's affected by data, AIs here. Foundational platforms are giving enterprises more and more developer experiences, you guys announced today. You guys are right in the wheelhouse insurance. It's one of the key verticals. Why is it so hot? Take us through some of the hot areas going on right now. Sure, well you know, fundamentally insurance is a data processing organization, has been forever, so for an organization to be able to process data more efficiently, more effectively, with less hands uh, on keyboards, is tremendously compelling, obviously, to the industry. Yeah, and I think that uh, within that, there's the concept of real-time data, right? So, oftentimes insurance companies care about the reports, and say like, hey, if, I, if all I need to do is like financial report, regulatory reporting, I can do it on a monthly basis, I can do it on a quarterly basis, what real-time data, and we often, we partner together very well, and we often t think about, or give the example of telematics, right? So telematics uh, is not a dream anymore. Uh, a lot of insurance companies know that with the um, prohibiting the use of credit score, behavioral data like telematics is key, and if you don't have that real-time view of how people are driving and how it would affect not only pricing but also claims, it's absolutely critical. And then the second area where we think it's important is everything that's going on with climate change. Um, climate change is happening, <laughs> right? <laughs> we all know that. But think about a catastrophe, right? So all of a sudden you have a hurricane in Florida and if you do not have that data coming in real time so that you know how is the catastrophe spreading, where do you need to send your claims adjusters to handle the claims? The impact that that would have in your balance sheet in terms of losses can really bring a company bankrupt. Yeah, you guys have been so successful data on data pipelining. You mentioned yeah. that. Real time is key. Yeah. What are some of the other use cases that tie this in and how do you guys work together on things? Yeah, so I mentioned telematics. Uh, we actually have a solution accelerator that we build together around usage-based insurance, but the, the concept of uh, the semi-structured data on telematics can go beyond just personal auto. I mean, commercial auto is uh, now heavily used in telematics. A lot of the OEMs, like Ford, General Motors, they know that the safety features are definitely important and you can just expand. Um, homeowners or commercial property, you can draw a parallel from telematics to just sensors, safety devices. Mm -hmm. uh, in the home, they're definitely critical. And even for life insurance, we're seeing the use of Fitbits mm -hmm. uh, to um, just get a more accurate view of mortality. So in our view, I think every single line of business in insurance can be affected by semi-structured and unstructured data as well. I mean, let's talk about the industry for a second. When I think of insurance, I think big IBM mainframes, yep. old school, a <laughs> yep. um, lot of paper. Bureaucracy, yeah, that's right. That's right. slow yes. moving glaciers. Yeah, you know that's probably what's the change? Because you got also now you got cybersecurity threats, ransomware, a lot of targeted attacks on some of the older systems. All that going on, they want to replatform and refactor some of their yeah. their industries. You're seeing a lot of that. That's right. What's the strategy, what are you guys seeing happening and where are you guys winning? Because you guys are doing very well in the space. Doing very well. What's the yeah. reason <laughs> why it's successful with Databricks and Mongo right now? I, I'd say you know that's probably one of our biggest use cases is helping customers modernize away from the constraints of legacy systems. And yeah. the challenge really is how do I build those digital features but I don't want to spend 10 years and 100 million dollars yeah. replacing the legacy <laughs> systems first. Yes. So how do, how do we federate that data out? We build yeah. an operational data layer. We build a single version of the truth in a modern data platform that developers can work with easily, yeah. build APIs against, build digital features. And it's that data, that operational data that's now cleansed, kind of deduplicated, single view of the truth, yeah. that just so happens, in our opinion, to be really advantageous to the data scientists. The, data, the machine learning models also want that clean, single version of the truth, too. 
Yeah, yeah, and something else that we're very passionate about is, you know, think about large language models, right? Uh, <laughs> everybody, everybody's talking about that. So the concept of taking data from transaction all the way into feature so that it can be consumable for yeah. LLMs, latency more than ever right. matters because when you're using large language models for underwriting, for assisting calls uh, like customer service or like call center, yeah. Waiting a couple of minutes versus having a lot of the summarization of a lot yeah. of that data in seconds is so important. So now all of a sudden, you're not only talking about like the real time, like why real time data is important, yeah. but just what are you going to do with that data and how are you going to empower functions to be able to do AI and get insights faster to all of your functions within insurance. That's right. And I think that's an area, by the way, that's going to be another upside for you guys in insurance. Definitely. You got a lot of language, got a lot yes. of data. Everything's kind of teed up, if you will, for yeah. the large language and the foundation models. That's right. I mean, you can be using computer vision, you mentioned telematics. Yes. It's multimodal, it's not just LLMs. You got the exactly. other foundational models, computer vision. Exactly. Another one. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and for computer vision, um, you know, of course everybody's talking about Tesla, <laughs> right? Or, or um, more um, kind of like the disruptors in the insurance space to say customer experience, right? Like, like you as a viewer of Netflix, <laughs> you expect to have the same amazing, delightful customer experience from your insurance company. So the dream of having an accident and using your phone to upload a picture of the car accident and getting the payout of the claim right away yeah. You know, that's what that's what our customers yeah. are expecting, but like you need to make sure that and you gotta make the sure model the picture's accurate. You, correct. Right. Okay, Not right? Correct. Now we have correct. truth. Correct, but but so that's a very good point because something that we've seen in the industry is that you know leveraging on structured data, you know, NLP has been doing that for decades, yep. right? Nothing new. So there. now it's nothing new there, but now you're not only talking about text, you're talking about video, you're talking about images, you're talking about audio. So how can you not only digitize all of that information, but do a lot of that feature engineering so that it's ready for consumption to build those models, to take those models into production. That's the key that's very, very important. That's right. How and by the way, the vector database announcement we saw fits in line with that because now you can get those patterns out earlier. Yes. It takes advantage of some of those old school NLP techniques yes. to right. get in saying, okay, we've seen the pattern before. Correct. This person, this, this insured thing, you can get that early, both preventative and post. Correct, correct. So multimodal, a yes. lot of data. Okay, so in, in the show here, the big, the big talk is app, app uh, data apps, data, app analytics. I'm just going to throw it out there. If you're a developer, data is someone else's job. That's okay? right. <laughs> like, so if I'm a developer, I, I either don't care about data, okay? That's one thing. So the whole, put that on the side, we'll that, come back to that. And then you got companies who are saying, I'm going to be the next big thing in AI, but have no data. <laughs> you got to have the data to be successful. It's kind of coming out in the hype of That's LLMs right. and foundational models that there is no value unless you have data. Not, I mean, LLMs like OpenAI, they, they scrape the web. Okay, they're strip mining the web and yes. charging for it. Okay, little <laughs> rant there, put that aside. Data value, and I don't care about productivity for the developer, I want to just program. Yeah. How do you guys see that? Because I can imagine a lot of app developers in the insurance industry are old school app developers, or new school, yes. not infrastructure nerds. Yes, and I, and I think Marcel and I, together, that's why I think Databricks and MongoDB together are so compelling because you look into these large insurers, there are the pockets of deep developer experience, there are the pockets of deep data and deep data experience. It's really bringing these two, two parts of the business together yeah. so that they can work more in unison and stop kind of fighting with one another and the friction that we typically see, that's the value of these two products together. If you can bring app developers, the best app developers with the de best data engineers and data science together, then yeah. you're going to start to see that flywheel start to move. Yeah, no, exactly, and it sounds a little bit of a cliche, but uh, the collaborative nature of, for example, like our platform Databricks. Uh, so, when I was interviewing with Databricks, like I'm an actually turned into a data scientist. So, you know, <laughs> I know how to. You're a data nerd too. Okay, yeah, welcome to the party. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I am John. I'm a data nerd too. <laughs> so, I I was trying to see like why, what does a 
Databricks workspace look like? And what are the programming languages? How would like my Python skills or my R skills would fit into that? And I was pleasantly surprised to say like, you know, from a target operating model, people process and technology, sometimes insurance companies, they said, what is the tool that I can use that my data scientists, my data engineers, right. my developers, my bank business analysts can all learn quickly? And the answer is, you don't need to impose a particular programming language, a particular tool, with platforms like Databricks, of course powered by MongoDB, you, like if you want to program in SQL, you can do it. If all of a sudden you want to use Python for like you know, some of the machine learning algorithms, you can do that. If you're an actuary and you have a package in R, you can do that as well. So all of a sudden in workspace, in a notebook, people can use a programming language of choice and you can see, you can do a lot of the sharing on that transactional world, the analytical world, or not just the data, but the models, the data pipelines, and the MLOps best practices. That's a great segment, and you're bringing together the developer and the data together. Now the next level question is, okay, people want to just learn how to build apps, the new AI apps, or the new analytical apps, or data apps, whatever you want to call it. Um, you got the lake house on your side, you got yes. the platform. And then I got to run it. I got to stand it up somewhere. Right now there's more of emphasis on building it, because that's what people are doing their discovery on. Less so much on how to run it, although you do care. I mean, you yeah. got to have some good enough infrastructure to train and run, but all the focus is on how to run it. So the question is, what have you guys learned as a best practice in the industry that you're in that people can get their hands around and start building out to discover what the value is of the new data? Because it's like a new value yeah. proposition emerging that wasn't gettable before mm. because the AI now can extract more new kinds of insight. That's kind of being discussed. Okay, what is that? And how do I integrate it to the application versus some dashboard? That's a great question, John. <clears throat> I think we fall back on some of the, the best practices that we've learned with domain-driven design and agile yeah. delivery, where what does an AI want? It wants a corpus of data. What does a domain-driven design team want? It wants a, a domain's worth of data. If we can blend those two things together yeah. and say that you're the transactional delivery team, but now you also yeah. own the responsibility yeah. of calling the A model, incorporating the A model into your domain so that the data is similar between analytics and transactional, and then at some point, this thing merges into just one entity. So Jeff, you're saying make a horizontal scalable layer with some vertical domain expertise <laughs> That's built right. in That's together. Right. That's right. I easy think, way. I think so, John. I, <laughs> think, I, I think we just nailed. I think we did the architecture. <laughs> I mean, this is what you guys are basically doing together. We are. We are, and um, you know, for us, for the longest time, um, people were wondering, like, I have a data warehouse. It works well. Yeah. You know, why do I have to change, right? So you mentioned, you know, that we created this concept of the lake house, right? Taking the best features of data warehouse from a performance and governance perspective, yeah. but also, uh, you know, from a data lake, flexibility and costs are important. So we create the lake house, but the, the, the part that I think kind of like brings it all together is governance, right? So yeah. for, you know, for, for if you look at like the data pipeline and you look at like ingestion transformation, governance is applicable to everything. People want to know, like, who created the data, who has access to the data, view, who can modify it, and upstream and downstream dependencies. So yeah. having that view, especially with just like graphics that would allow people to go back, is not only important for an yeah. organization, I think it's very important for regulatory purposes, right? Yeah. Think about GDPR, think about CCPA. Right. All regulators are going back and saying like, hey, if you started with this data and now you end up with like 10% less of the data, yeah. What happened to that data? Why, why, why did you exclude it from the analysis? Because again, it can all go back to biases, yeah. right? The data that, like, everybody's talking about biases, racial biases, you know, discriminatory, disparate impact, but it's about being proactive, and you hit a little bit on that because it's not about model drift and say like, why is my model not accurate anymore? Yeah. It starts with the data and how you process in the data yeah. through the pipelines and apps. Right. You're only as good as what your input is, right? Correct, garbage in, input. garbage out. <laughs> well no, but this is a good point. It's called, this whole debate, we've had this on theCUBE many times around compliance. Is it a drag yes. to innovation? And if you get that right, it's interesting because it's almost like 
going through the airport, TSA. <laughs> you know, it's like, you, what line are you in? I'm in, I'm in yeah. TSA pre, I go right through. That's a yeah. good line, right? Yeah. Another line, okay, pipeline, ah, oh, yeah, yes. take off your shoes and belt, and yeah. that's kind of like the, the, the compliance line. That's right, okay. so, that's right. If you look at what's going on now, if you can get that freed up and kind of let that shackles go away, then you're talking about freeing the data up. So what I'm seeing here is that, okay, you can have the compliance and that reinforces Amazon's security conference. They talk about authorization scale, not so much access. Because there's no perimeter in cloud, right? Yeah. You want to pick the best features of the data lake and compose your own data freedom That's to right. let the apps program the data. That's right. So you check the compliance box, get global, global entry, <laughs> right? yep. that's, that's the right. that metaphor. This is kind of a new philosophy, because now the, the value proposition with AI changes the game. Yes. Because you, there's insights that are now available yep. yeah. that were never there before, that's so right. you don't know how to get them unless the developers code. That's right. The developers are going to be unlocking the value. That's right. Not the DBAs. That's right, it's in the real-time data. What happens yeah. when these AI models that are data hungry, they eat all of your data warehouse and your data lake data? Where are they going to come next? Yeah. The real-time application data. All right, well I think we're pretty stoked about the future. I guess to come back and get back to what we were talking about, the insurance kind of went out tangent there, but <laughs> this is a future scenario that's playing out like right now. Yes it is. And smart people in the insurance and these industries are figuring out, how do I take my domain expertise, yes. yeah. refactor those with the data, put a container around the, the apps, keep it you know, quarantined. Yep. You know, I saw a company here sponsored Unblock. They actually can build COBOL code with AI. That's right. They've actually replicated COBOL. <laughs> cool. That's know? right. So like, hey, That's right. large language models, just you know, build me a COBOL connector. <laughs> <laughs> they can modernize. So you're sort of seeing a lot more legacy integration. Yes. And insurance has like got tons of legacy. It's it's ripe yeah. ripe for transformation. Absolutely. So what's next with you guys and your partnership? What what are you guys working on? What's cool? What's the coolest thing you worked on? I, I think we are, we're pretty excited to be launching more solution accelerators together. Uh, Jeff and I, you know, we, we agree on many things, but the, the one thing that we agree the most is that there's a lot of information coming to our clients, and uh, anybody can come with like a PowerPoint deck talking about trends and use cases, but showing them the art of the possible, you know, walking them, giving them something, we're like, huge open source company, as you guys know, and oftentimes we are like, why, why would you give something away for free? And for us, it's just like, yeah. we want to accelerate the time to value on these solutions, and you know, giving, giving clients, for example, for underwriting or for claims, like all of these artifacts with the data, with like the data pipelines, with just some ideas on just how can they be thinking about the data differently? And what are some of the, even like reports on, or, or dashboards, visualizations? It's not a solution that would be plug and play, but it would get them 70% of the way, right? And then from there, every single company would tailor in a different way because the value that you know, two companies may have with the same solution accelerator is basically two things, their people, and their data. That's right. Every single company will have their own data, their own strategy, their own mix yeah. of businesses, what they think is like, you know, what they want to be in the future to yeah. stay That's successful. Right. That's a competitive advantage. What's the most exciting thing you're working on? I think the partnership with Databricks right now is, is really, you know, Dolly and, and large language models are the tip yeah. of the spear. What we're really after is to transform these organizations to bring AI into applications, we know that they're going to require high performing teams. High performing yeah. teams and highly effective teams aren't, aren't slowed down by the, yeah. the, the noise. They're not slowed down by the fact that the data is sprawled all over the place. We really want to solve that problem and bring developers and data scientists closer together, yes. working together, as well as the underlying data that they share. The modernization. Modernization, yes. John. Thanks so much, yes. Marcelo. Thank you, and Jeff. Thank, Thank you, Jeff, for coming on. This is theCUBE, breaking down industry successes Horizontally scalable, vertically integrated data and AI is all here. Part of the renaissance and this Cambrian explosion of AI developers driving the change and the standards. It's developer-led innovation here in theCUBE. Of course, we're open source too, live streaming content. <laughs> I'll go to siliconangle.com for all the coverage. We'll be right back, more coverage for the rest of the day. We've got a bunch more interviews left. The CEO, Dave, is going to be on next. Stay with us. We'll be right back.